Anthony Ha from TechCrunch, and I am here with Josh Tetrick, the founder and CEO of Hampton Creek Foods. They're working on plant-based replacements for animal products, starting with eggs. You got it. Um, Josh, you want to tell us a little bit about where the idea came from? Sure. So uh, a good buddy of mine, actually my best friend, has been telling, for, telling me for years about how animals are treated, um, how uh, animal consumption can be bad for our health. Uh, and we thought, why not take the animal out of the equation, particularly when it comes to the egg industry, which if you kind of look back at 30,000 feet, you realize just how massive it is. About 1.3 trillion eggs are laid every single year around the world, 79 billion in the U.S., and 99% of all those eggs are laid by hens in these places called battery cage facilities that aren't always the best for hens' welfare, and aren't always the best for the environment. So our idea is let's remove the hen out of this equation and see if we can do exactly the same thing, but even a little bit better with plants. So, you know, I know that you're a vegan. I'm a vegetarian. There's certainly a lot of other kind of, you know, replacement products like fake meat, or I think there's, you know, some egg replacers as well. What are you trying to do both with this specific product and then also with the company as a whole to go beyond what's out there already? Yeah, and the, the idea is let's just stop compromising. And I always talk about my dad who loves Twinkies, who doesn't eat healthy, who doesn't really care about the environment that much, but I was looking for a way to give him what he wants without all the externalities that aren't always the best. So our idea is let's give my dad a Twinkie or my mom a muffin or anyone around the world a muffin or a cookie or mayonnaise that tastes just as good, that feels just as good, but is less expensive than what an egg would be. So often I think there's, there's compromise. Let's be good, but it's a little bit more expensive. So part of our ethos is forget about that more expensive stuff. This is a mainstream product for everyone around the world to enjoy. Um, and if they care about doing better for the world, maybe that's a good reason, but maybe they don't even care and they just want to save money and that's certainly fine with us too. So you've got this whole big lab slash kitchen slash office here and I think we're actually going to go take a tour right now. We're, we're going to take a tour and we're going to do a few things on the tour. We're going to make sure you do a cookie taste test, a mayonnaise taste test, and you're actually going to watch how mayonnaise is made back there. That sounds awesome. Let's go do it. It's going to be fun. Come on. So we have 2,400 square feet of food lab space. Um, the very first section you'll see here is dedicated to the world of sauces and dressings. So about 1.2 trillion eggs are laid every single year. 79 billion eggs are laid in the US and 33% of all those eggs are processed for further use, which means they end up in things like mayo and ranch dressing and Caesar dressing. So this first station is specifically dedicated to removing eggs from those products and putting in something better. Okay. As we go over here, the second station is dedicated to the world of baked goods. Muffins, cookies, um, pancakes. So these guys right here, food scientists, chefs, they take eggs out of muffins and cookies and put in something that's a bit better. And our third section right here is dedicated to what we call the deep science. This is where you'll find the biochemists and the molecular biologists and the people really trying to understand the egg at a deep molecular level. What is it? Let's take it apart. And let's identify plants around the world that match the profile of an egg, but just a bit better. So we were looking at, you know, we've got the sauces and we've got, you know, the baked goods and your initial product, if I understand it, it's going to actually try to cover all, all, all that kind of full spectrum initially. So it'll be focused on baked goods. You baked got goods it. initially. Okay, you got great. It. But not the sauces yet. That's sort of a little further down the road. So the sauces and dressings product right now is actually specific to food manufacturers. Okay. So oh, think right. about that large, yeah, large food companies are using tons and tons of mayonnaise and ranch dressing. So we're working with them to remove eggs from those products and put in our plant-based ingredient. Okay, okay, so the first consumer product, baked goods. You got it. So as we come back here, this is uh, Chef Chris Jones. Hey, how y'all doing today? What's up, Chris? And Chef works with uh, our team back here to, to take the eggs out of uh, mayo specifically right now and put in something made with plants. And he's gonna show you guys how the process actually works. And as we think about this, Anthony, part of the name of our product is Beyond Eggs. And part of being Beyond Eggs is not just matching, which is a challenge in and of itself, but actually going beyond. And for us, going beyond means it lasts longer on the shelf. Um, it doesn't have cholesterol. Um, it tastes better to some people. Um, but that shelf life uh, is probably the most uh, acute challenge that we face, actually pushing beyond the boundaries of what an egg mayo can last on the shelf. An egg has about 21 different functionalities. And one of the key functionalities of an egg is holding the oil and the water together. So as we're developing our plant-based egg, that is a key challenge. Can we hold that oil and water together? So now, right now we're starting the emulsification. We start out slow and low, just like you would with an egg. It's actually starting to catch the oil, so it looks like it's cooling on the top. 
Now we're taking it up. This is where we're gonna get to the mayo part. This is the fun part. It's a great sign that you can see emulsion went very well. There's this concave that is unique to this process. And as we've done these 400 runs, um, each of these concaves is almost its own fingerprints. So it gives us a little bit, as it weeps, we can kind of tell how thick it is right away. So these all get recorded, and this goes into its actual birth certificate, which we have. And then we're going to double check the pH. And then this guy's ready for jarring, storage, testing, and crashing. Josh and Doug Anthony are a part of the team that looks down deep into these some of our ingredients and really tries to understand it from a molecular level. Uh, Josh has a background in biochemistry and Doug has a background in molecular biology. So they approach it in a radically different way than Chris would approach it as a chef or Megan would approach it as a food scientist. So what, what are they actually trying to accomplish right now? So what we're trying to accomplish is basically work with as many different natural plant protein sources as are available and characterize their biochemical properties and characterize their functional properties to see if we can tie what we learn at a biochemical level with how they perform in, say, an emulsion or in a baking application and try to establish those relationships as clearly as possible. And so we're trying to work with as many different species and basically we see ourselves kind of as the lead candidate group, right? Where we try to go through all of the possible candidates develop really fast, easy assays to run through them and say, okay, this is a hit, this is not a hit, and then advance that to an application team to see what they can do with it, if they can turn that into a viable product. So in a lot of ways, you know, the egg is intimidating, as we talked about before, 22 different functionalities. Who would have known you know, this thing it can make a muffin rise and a cookie hold together and oil water come together in mayo or ranch dressing? But we have a whole world of plants out there, millions of plant species. So they're always diving deep into these world of plant species to pick out these particular functionalities. Because for us, it really is about these functionalities. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you're not necessarily looking for one thing that can do everything that the egg can accomplish, but more breaking it down to specific tasks and then finding proteins that can accomplish those tasks. Yeah, so the, the, the proteins and the fats of an egg um, are very hard to capture with just one source. So we have to be willing to you know, open up uh, our view to everything that's out there and, and just be open to the possibility that the, the protein from one species may work in one application, the protein from another plant species may be appropriate for another application. Right, so let's continue the tour. So I said, this is the molecular section. Even as we kind of loop around here, you can see two ovens that we use. Remember, we're putting the muffins in, we're putting pound cakes in, yellow cakes in, cookies with our product with eggs and then directly comparing them. As we continue on around here, you can see the middle section is the bakery section. And we're going to, if you're up for it, Anthony, we're going to give you a, a cookie taste test and we're going to give you a mayonnaise taste test. Okay. Good that enough. That sounds so, great. So we're going to loop right over here. This is, sorry to interrupt, Shweta. Hi. Meet Anthony. Hey. Shweta is our. Good to see you again. Shweta is our Director of Bakery Innovation. How are you doing, Anthony? Good. How are you? <laughs> ready for some more cookies? I'm today? always he's ready al for cookies. He's always ready for cookies. <laughs> right. Okay, so so again, let's let's so what, what's happening here is you've taken some that are made with uh, normal eggs and yes. some that were made with, with beyond, beyond eggs. eggs, and it's the same formulation. There are right. no changes in, in them except right. for the fact that one right. has eggs and one has beyond. And they were and they were in fact baked. They together. were baked on the same pan. Okay. Together at the same time, and they pulled out at the same time, and they pulled down at the same time. There you go. Okay. Okay. Do you want to do it too? I'm going to watch in it. Anthony, <laughs> you, you stuff me full of cookies every day, oh. so we'll let Anthony huh? do it. That's very good. I'm going to go with the first one, but I, that, it's real hard. It's real hard. Okay. <laughs> Take, taking one for the team. I'm going to go with that one slightly. No, last one to go. Okay. Bigger chunk. This is it. <laughs> I'm going to go with those. That's slightly better. They, they, they taste very, very so much. Really hard to tell the difference. Um, so yeah, let's let's have the reveal. Ta-da! <laughs> you have um, you picked Beyond Eggs. 
in two of the instances, <laughs> and eggs in one. There we go. There we go, two to one. So now we're gonna we're gonna move away from the world of baked goods. Okay, great. Back into the world of mayonnaise, where we're gonna do a mayonnaise taste test. This is the mayo you just okay. made. This is the mayo. Well, All let right. me ask you, so do you like mayo? I do. First off. I wouldn't, you know, it's one of those things that I rarely taste it on its own. Uh -huh. I'm not like the kind of person who likes. Do you likes. ever just have a bowl of mayo and eat that? Um, only when it's, you know, a real dark time in my life. Right, and gotcha. So, yeah, I so I did yesterday, but, okay. but normally not that often. Okay, here we go. It's really good. So and bad, it tastes, huh? uh, tastes like mayo. I, that's enough uh, eating my camera. Um, we've tasted sort of, you know, the, those kind of, the outcome of, of the work, but uh, you guys are actually selling, you know, this egg replacer, Beyond Eggs. So you maybe bet. you want to show us actually uh, what it's going to look like? You bet. So again, the goal is to enable people to remove eggs from the muffins, from cookies, from the world of baked goods. We're going to start out with the consumer-facing product, and this is a mock-up of what our packaging will be looking like. And for a lot of people, Anthony, it's about saving money. And for a lot of people, it's about reducing cholesterol in their diet. So we find more and more Americans with an interest in avoiding cholesterol entirely or just reducing it. So mm -hmm. this will give anyone, my grandma, my dad, an opportunity to make cookies or cakes or whatever they would uh, normally bake, uh, but do it in a way where they don't have to take in cholesterol. Right. And when does this go on sale? So this is going to be uh, launching in early February. Mm -hmm. And, and for initially, it's going to be sold directly from the uh, Hampton Creek food site. You got it. All right, great. It. Well, we will keep an eye out for it, and thank you so much for your Good time. Good stuff, my friend. Thanks so much for coming in. Yeah, thanks for having us and for the food. You bet.